is every company's data an absolute mess? This was a genuine question asked on a Reddit thread uh, in the data engineering subreddit. I'll put up the post here. Just based on the likes and comments alone, you can kind of see where people were feeling about this. And in today's video, I want to talk about one of the reasons that, yeah, a lot of data at companies and the processes that manage said data are a mess. And as most people commented below, you know, there's kind of some jokes about job security and things like that. But I want to really talk about why this is and maybe some of the things we can do to try to solve this uh, at different situations. Because here's the thing, I've worked at companies all over the place, both full time, uh, in healthcare and Facebook and startups, and just in consulting. So I've seen dozens of companies data infrastructure and even at companies like Facebook, where you assume their data infrastructure is very mature, which is true, there is still somewhat of a mess. So let's talk about some of the causes of said problems and some of the solutions you can implement. And I'll be using again, real world examples, both from Facebook and prior companies um, of these problems. Just a quick pause for those of you who this is your first time on this channel. Hey there, my name is Ben Robijan, AKA the Seattle Data Guy. Um, I currently work in consulting, but prior to that, uh, I worked at Facebook and several other tech companies working on data engineering. So I've seen plenty of companies' data infrastructure. All right, so the first problem that you'll often see, and this was something I felt at my very first company, is that there's so much bureaucracy and so much data governance around trying to make sure that data isn't a mess that in a weird way it causes a mess. And, and let me explain. So the very first company I worked at uh, I happened to be an analyst on a financial team and they had tons of reporting that they wanted to do. Now, above me, there was a senior engineer who had made a copy of the data warehouse and had kind of like somehow made a deal with the data warehousing or data team um, at this company uh, to basically get a copy of that data warehouse that we could do whatever we wanted to. Uh, again, they'd give us uh, updates uh, in, of data every day, but we got to kind of add whatever we wanted on the side. So now you've already caused an initial problem, which you duplicated the data in multiple places. So which one is right? If you're reporting off our data warehouse or the actual data warehouse, there was always a lag. And this is just the natural thing that happens when you block analytics or anyone trying to do analysis from delivering their work by putting too many layers of governance. And this is always tricky. Like how do you both enable people to work with data and feel like they can get to data quickly without forcing them to wait three months to do a small, simple query. And that's literally what would happen. And someone recently commented uh, on my LinkedIn, I might have removed the post, but they joked that like it took three months to put in a lookup table and sometimes six. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a lookup table is usually just some sort of categorization table where you have some values that you maybe want to translate into a different set of values. And I've literally experienced this problem where I think I was just as simple as trying to do um, leadership kind of headcount so we were trying to figure out who is in charge of who and there were different definitions of how teams were managed so someone was trying to manually manage one of these definitions and again you can already see a problem with the manually management part but that's just how they managed that process there was no place that that existed other than this person's excel sheet and so they wanted me a new 22 year old uh analyst to figure out how i was going to get things to be automated, right? Okay, well, we want this automated. Um, please get this in the data warehouse somehow. I did whatever I could, and it took about some months between talking to the team, them having to go through all their layers of data governance, till they eventually uh, added something in. Essentially, we were pulling from a SharePoint list that was being updated by this person, uh, but it took six months, and this was to basically develop a simple report. And there are arguments to be made that I should have just had that CSV manually managed somewhere instead rather than taking so much time and effort just to try to put this somewhere so it's automated. I think that's one of the problems we often have in the data world is we try to automate processes that aren't really worth automating. The real ROI isn't there, but for some reason, you know, people are like, I think we can automate this, so let's try. Um, and I think that's often a problem we face. This kind of brings my next point up, which uh, is CSVs that are manually managed or Google Sheets or SharePoint lists. These exist everywhere. Like, I think everyone thinks that they don't exist everywhere. I was at Facebook. These situations existed where it's, someone was manually managing a Google Sheet and that was getting scraped into essentially a table that was then getting used for reporting somewhere. Initially, when I started at Facebook, we had actually a decent system uh, where we could put uh, some of these tables and you could go in and actually update a table to a database. So it at least was more consistent with all of our processes. But eventually they deprecated that and so yeah you're kind of like okay how do I 
automate this whole uh, process here that is manually managed by someone. Only needs to be updated maybe once every six months. But in order to do this one report that is somewhat automated and in the cloud and on Tableau, you know, do we just have to like somehow stick this table in manually every time? And it just becomes this cacophony uh, of, of automated processes that maybe make no sense to be automated. And I think that's just, again, a constant problem um, that we all have. I think the other risk that you often take when you automate these processes is that generally there's just that one person who's managing that uh, whole pipeline or that whole automating of that Google Sheet. And they're the only ones that know it should be updated, right? If they leave the company, no one else will know that that Google Sheet should be updated and that reports breaks and that report breaks anyways. In terms of solutions for some of these problems, I think you often have to find a balance between what's worth automating and what's not. You know, if something is getting updated once a year, is it really worth adding into your process or not? I think the only other question I'd have there, if you're out there trying to answer it, is do you have an easy process to automate it or not? I think at Facebook we did. Um, you know, it was pretty easy to develop DAGs. Uh, and so it wasn't like this crazy thing where we had to put in months of effort to try to get something simple into a table. But I think at some companies, yeah, like it, just to get something onto SharePoint, like that took me conversing with people. Um, and then from there, creating the automated process took another few months. And so, you know, in order to do a very simple automated SharePoint list that goes into the data warehouse, it, it probably, I think, took me like four to six months um, in order to do. And I don't know. I don't know if the uh, juice was worth the squeeze in the end. So there's a little bit of just trade-offs you need to do in order to answer this question. Now, before going too much further, I want to say thank you so much for our sponsor today, which is, well, the Seattle Data Guy, uh, otherwise known as me. Basically, if you're out there and you need data engineering or data infrastructure consulting help, if you need to figure out how to take your raw data and make it valuable, that's where we come in. If you're struggling with a snowflake migration or trying to figure out how to use Databricks, our team can come in and help you do that quickly and easily. If you want to learn more about how my consulting team can help you, uh, you can sign up with the Calendly link below for a consultation and we'll be happy to talk even if it's just 30 minutes to talk about how I can help you even if it's just 30 minutes of us talking through the problem and we solve it right there. Now let's jump back to the actual video. Another common issue, and I think this is one of the largest causes of the fact that data is a mess everywhere, is that easy doesn't mean better. There are so many solutions that exist these days that are focused on making it easier to take data from point A to point B. I was talking to someone who's been in the data world for the last 20 years, and they were telling me stories about when SSIS came out and this DBA was convinced that their job was gone, right? They're like, it's automating all of my work. I don't, you know, I'm not needed anymore. And to some degree, we're finding out that DBAs are still massively required when you have Snowflake bills that are running up uh, who knows what bills uh, and you need to manage security and all these other layers. But that aside, let's talk about some of the more modern solutions like Tableau, like DBT, although Tableau is 2003, um, but I'm gonna use an example that happened with me when I first started in the data world. Originally for data viz solutions, I learned D3.js, which is a JavaScript language. But at my first job, they were like, hey, here's Tableau, make dashboards. Now, no one told me how to really go about making a dashboard in terms of like a process. Um, I kind of learned what a good dashboard would look like, but I didn't ever learn how to go through the process of creating something that is useful for an end user. But I put out like 10 or 15 dashboards in the span of a few weeks and I was like look at all this great work that I've done because it's so easy to build these dashboards what I didn't think about was the cost to run all the tables I'd built the actual infrastructure that I put behind it and all of the you know just maintenance required to do all that work the truth is easy isn't necessarily better it just makes it easier for you to make bad decisions faster and I think this is something why a lot of people call out dbt because they're often pointing at the fact that, yeah, it's great that we can write queries that then, you know, get built out into, you know, tables or views or however you set it up. Look, that's great. But this was also a situation that Airbnb had. When they switched to Hive, everyone could use SQL, everyone could build tables, and they quickly found chaos would just be built. Because the faster you go, the more tables you have, the more tables you have, the more maintenance you need, the more maintenance you need, the more you're like, who's maintaining what, who's owning what. Is this actually a valid table or is this just someone's one-off table and you have all of this chaos 
that you need to manage now. Making things easier doesn't necessarily make things better. There is still the requirement of taking a moment and thinking about what you're actually building and what the plan is to maintain it and actually, you know, own this process going forward. I like to say at Facebook, you know, when we built data pipelines, we looked at it as data as infra. Like the data we built was the data that people relied on. And we knew that there were multiple nodes, you know, in terms of like depth that were dependent on that data. It wasn't just our team. There'd be a team that'd be creating data off that data. There'd be a team that was probably creating data off of that data. And so our data always had to be reliable. It has to be on time. There were certain requirements we had when building these data sets. And so I think that's something that can be skipped often in this modern world where we want to move quickly. And I did reference data governance kind of also causing issues. So there is a fine balance here between too much data governance and none, but none will likely lead to a little bit of anarchy where everyone just builds and then you switch teams and then no one knows what's going on. And that's why many of us are passionate and kind of get frustrated because we're constantly seeing the same problems over and over and over again at companies and why most of us are not that worried about things like ChatGPT because most data is kind of a mess and yes we're trying to solve it and we're constantly trying to improve it but things are just so quickly changing that even once we've maybe solved the current data sets you know someone changes something underneath the source data changes other things just break and bad data is inserted and suddenly everything we've worked on crumbles again in front of us. For some people, this might deter them. Um, I think for a lot of us, we kind of enjoy some of the chaos. We enjoy trying to bring order to what is, you know, kind of a mess of systems uh, because we do not have stagnant systems where, you know, maybe you're building something with very clear requirements or at least clear um, assumptions. You know, when you're building something with clear requirements and assumptions, um, in these cases, often you're not. Things can just change so quickly that everything you've put effort into building um, could become obsolete very quickly. But that's the answer to the question, is everyone's data infra a mess? And the kind of yes and no. We're always kind of constantly going two steps forward, one step back in terms of how we build our data. Hopefully, again, that doesn't tour anyone. Hopefully you're excited to work in data. I don't think you should be sad. I think you should be excited and have some ideas in terms of how you can maybe improve some of these processes. Take the time to actually plan out and design uh, what you're doing, take the time to actually try to put in governance that people won't just be feeling like they're blocked by, but feeling like they're enabled by, and always try to balance what should be automated and what should just maybe not be. It, these are simple tips, but they might help you uh, just improve a lot of your data infrastructure. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Thanks and goodbye, y'all.